How do I save on divorce is what we're talking about today on the East Central Business Show. I'm John Naylor, joined by a resident expert financial planner, Helen Baker. Hello. Yes, and Shannon Dakin from Dakin Family Law, an accredited family law specialist. Hi, John. <laughs> I think that's the fifth or sixth time I've said that, so I'm getting good. Now, that disclaimer, of course, on behalf of the ladies, this is general information only, and you should seek specialist advice about your own situation as the matters needs to be, yeah? I think I did that pretty well that people time. Always happy. Yep. Yeah, well, there we go. Okay, <laughs> saving a divorce. Yeah, like a lot of people going in, waiting in, oh, divorce is coming. There's, you know, that's, I'm going to get my piece of the pie. But if you can save a divorce, it's actually a pretty, it's a bigger pie, yeah? Mm. I would say the biggest, uh, the biggest thing you can do is avoid a mistake. So mm -hmm. I list a whole stack of them in the book on um, you'll find about different mistakes that people make because it's really easy to quantify how much you wasted after something's happened. Mm. But if you can prevent one, it's hard to quantify it, but you just know that you have saved them. So mm. I think they're important. But Yeah, I think there's a lot of ways that you can save on legal costs. Mm. And one of the ways you can do that is to get on top of your, let's say if we're doing a property settlement, Get on top of what your assets, your liabilities, your super and any other financial resources are, uh, corporate trusts and those sorts of mm. things. Make sure you can gather all the relevant information quickly mm. because in a property settlement, uh, a lot of costs can be wasted in the, the stage of what we call disclosure, which mm. is the exchange of the relevant financial documentation and information. Mm. So if you can do that quickly and cleanly, you're already off on a great start to save costs. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, that's the thing. We often hear those, uh, those anecdotes about like, oh, there's money stashed and all. Oh, the, there's a like, suspicion that goes mm. and with, with the emotion of divorce, yeah? Like, you know, I believe this has happened and the credit card's been run up. I mean... This is all stuff on the table, yeah, it's, it's mm. yeah, messy. Yeah. And I think they're the things that you want to get control over as quickly as possible. So mm. we talk about sexually transmitted debt and <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> trying to... Uh, I was wondering where that was going. Yeah, <laughs> try and get that shut down as quickly as possible and get, again, get people control over the elements so that then if adjustments have to be made, mm -hmm. um, and more than anything, you just stop the leakage as quickly as possible. Yeah, okay. So yep. that's important to have those conversations up front uh, with the right advice. Yeah. So you can actually put together a structure and follow a process around this rather than getting caught up with the, the emotion. Yeah. yeah, so I prefer people would go and get some initial legal advice, some initial financial advice, and probably some emotional advice as well. Mm. And then from there, you can look at the next stage, which is, okay, what do I do next? And so my background in project management originally means I just want to try and get my ducks in a row here, get information, mm. move to the next stage, do that, and so on. And that's a really good way to save a lot of costs because if you go down where you, you're seeking legal advice and you're doing all of these elements and sending information back without really understanding why you should have those assets in your financial settlement, why they benefit you or don't benefit you, mm. so what you should keep, what you should trade, what you should sell, um, and the big picture and how it's all underpinned with those five foundations we talk about, um, then the lawyer can go back and say, here we go, and here's a draft, as opposed to lots of that before, and they haven't even sought financial advice. Okay, so, and as opposed to a family uh, lawyer, you can talk to both sides, yeah? Yeah. You can work for both sides to get, you know, an actual, the best going forward type solution around the finances and, yep. you know, maintaining and improving wealth over time. Absolutely, so again, making sure that the left hand and the right hand's talking to each other as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And obviously if it's amicable, it makes it easier. But I think that's a part of that preliminary advice as well, because mm. if you're actually getting people to understand the benefits of you know, what we talk about um, from a legal perspective or from a financial perspective to make it all work for everybody in a sensible way. Mm. I mean, the reality is no one wins because you've just lost the economies of scale. You know, you had two people working towards a retirement, you had one home, you're now mm. in two, like all of those things are still consequences that are not going to be great. Mm. So we still got to try and make this work, particularly I think if children are involved, it's important to make sure the kids are looked after too. Mm, yeah, okay. And then around the subject of saving on divorce is what we're here talking about. Mm -hmm. Shannon, obviously, and we've already touched on it, like divorce court is like a, not a place you want to be. Yeah, it's the best way to save legal costs is just avoid the court in, entirely. And there's so many other processes mm. that you can use to try and reach an agreement. Uh, if it's not coming easily. And mm. coming easily, I mean, some people are able to sit down and just say, we've got this and this is what we're gonna do with it. This is how we're gonna provide for you. This is how we're gonna provide for the kids and this mm. is what we're gonna do. Um, and that's obviously the ideal situation. 
But even if that's not working, for a lot of people it doesn't work that way after you've just had um, a, a separation. So there's, uh, you know, going through the collaborative law process, that's one option. And that's where you have two lawyers that are collaboratively trained. And although we can't advise both parties, it's actually um, quite a unique situation because the lawyers sign a contract saying, if we don't reach a settlement, you can't use us in court. So then no right. one's doing anything oh, that's setting anyone okay. up for court. So you really all have a vested interest in getting this over the line. Mm. And you meet rather than having the lawyers lobbing, you know, big grenades at each other through the email. Mm. Uh, you sit down together and then you can bring in people mm. that are also trained in financial aspects and also people that maybe need to help uh, handle the emotional side of things as well. Uh, so apart from that, there's also mediations where you could get an independent mm. third party and you can have your lawyers there and ideally you work together on an arrangement that works, uh, getting legal advice in real time on the day and maybe even, you know, having a financial planner that's able to plug into that process in an appropriate way that suits everyone and then get it all drawn up. That's the best way that, that I think it is, you know, there is to try and resolve your, your family law matters in a way that can just save so much cost. And it's not, I think also a lot of people talk about the financial cost, but you've got to think about the emotional cost of litigation mm. as well. It, that can be huge and it can take its toll and have a flow on effect to the kids as well. Well, this is what is important for you, speaking off camera, both of you guys, you're mm. saying like, while there's a lot of empathy around what you're doing, you have to take a certain emotional framework into the discussions with people. The actual, uh, the emotional stuff is best dealt with by a counsellor. Right. Like you're there to be empathetic, but you know, that's your time's too expensive, yeah? Yeah, and it's what we say is we're not trained in doing that. Obviously, we care, but mm. we ha we're there to do a role that it's a counsellor's job to deal with those situations. So, no, Shannon, around that yeah. subject? Yeah, look, I think if they can work with someone that's separate to their family or their friends, mm. uh, where they can really unpack the emotional side of things, that can really improve their chances of staying away from roadblocks to settlement and mm. being able to give you know timely advice to their lawyer and also take on the advice that they're getting and mm. make informed decisions so mm. anything that can aid that process mm. can save legal costs because it would save potentially disputes over things that you may not all you, you may not have necessarily disputed if you were in say a better emotional space yeah or arguably a, a lower hourly rate as well yeah that's right. <laughs> That's case. All right. Now, finally, so and I guess that saving on divorce, though, and I know around financial planning, you're like saving is also, you know, a, a thing that drives you towards a, a financial future as well. So if you do save on divorce, that compounding effect over a lifetime is valuable, very yeah. valuable. But I also think you need to be wise in being of the mindset that I am going to throw some money at this to get good advice and mm. make wise decisions now because that will set up down the track. Mm. And I remember many, many, many years ago, a lawyer saying, how much did you spend on your wedding? Like, why do you think you wouldn't spend quite a bit on a divorce oh, okay. as well? Oh, okay. So I think the expectation is people don't want to throw money at it because if you look at what you put money at for a wedding, you know, the dress, the rings, the party, oh, all the of that's great. Yeah. Whereas you're throwing money at something that is now like a bit yuck. Mm. Um, but I think you have to be wise because if the cost of getting it wrong mm. will be, yeah, I right. think, will be even immediate for yeah. something. So it's I a think negative if, thing, don't feed it money. Yeah. Oh, and fabulous. just be wise, put some money into it to prevent a mistake. Yeah, all right, fabulous. Yeah. All right, really great information. We are running out of time in this episode. Shannon Dakin, how do people get some more information from you or get in contact? If they could just go to my website, dakinfamilylaw.com.au. Yeah, okay. Helen? And mine's onyourownfeet.com.au. Okay, fabulous. Really great information and knowledge around the subject of divorce, the finances, the legal side. This is part of a, this is a five and six part series here. So if you haven't seen the other videos, really do suggest you go and have a look for them. And we'll catch you next time on the eCentral Business Show. So just a general chat with Helen Baker, our resident expert financial planner on the eCentral Business Show. Helen, now, uh, where's this passion come from about financial planning? We've just shot your first series. You've talked about, you like it. Yeah. Where's that come from? I didn't know to start with. So my background was originally uh, more as a fixer. So I used to go into businesses and fix things and make things happen. So mm. I think the combination of the finance background, the project management, the fixer, and uh, dealing with people, one, two, three, and here I am. <laughs>